If we had to choose one word that best describes what practicing is, most of us would probably choose repetition. And there's nothing wrong with that really, as repetition is essential for us to achieve mastery of anything involving our motor skill. Playing piano, complex activities human beings do, demanding enormous amounts of real estate in our brain, if you will. Much of the motor cortex, which is the region of the cerebral cortex that deals with the planning, control, and execution of voluntary movement is dedicated to two things, the voluntary movements of our hands and the voluntary movements of our mouths and all of the muscles we use for speaking, smiling, chewing, you name it. It really doesn't take much brain power to kick a ball or to run down the street, but all of the activities we do with our hands and with our mouths require enormous resources from the brain. So this means that practicing the piano is a demanding activity for us, and doing this efficiently requires great concentration on our part, along with vast amounts of repetition, because after all, we are dealing with motor skill. But the problem with repetition is that the mind tends to get bored. It does not like it when we do the same thing over and over because the mind really prefers novelty. It prefers change. When we practice, each of us uses something we can refer to as our internal cueing and feedback system. And we use this to monitor our progress. This is what allows us to know if something is actually getting better. But the repetition that is essential to our progress tends to dull this internal cueing and feedback system, making it difficult for us to get them. And that's really why using variation as the foundation of our practicing can be so transformative. Although the ways in which we can vary our practicing are almost limitless, the ones that I'll speak about today can be placed into one of three basic groups. The first of which is what I refer to or like to call shifting accents. And then we do transp transposition. And the third group is symmetrical inversion. So let's start with shifting accents. I'm sure virtually every one of you has used some type of shifting accents in your practicing. And the usual way of doing this is what I would call rhythmic variation. One of the most common ways we do this is to dot running 16th notes so that one plays long, short, long, short, long, and the reverse of that. Here, we see how that's commonly used in the first Hannon exercise. And I'll bet that many of you have your students practice this exercise in one of the two ways that you see uh, in, the, in, the power, in the PowerPoint projection here for evenness and control. The way it's written, of course, is what we might do. And although we are shifting accents when we play this way, what I'm speaking about is really something different. And that is to take a passage of running on each of the 16th notes of the beat in succession, of course. You can see that in this example. Here, I've made the second 16th of the beat the downbeat, so that the second and fourth fingers in each hand are getting the emphasis instead of what would normally be the first and fifth fingers. So it would be like this. Mm -hmm. 